Hello, friends. This is Adrian Sinclair with a podcast with interesting people, and today my guest is Zappy Zaplin, and I am delighted to have him on the show. We're going to be talking about PTSD. We're going to talk about、uh, suicide. We're going to talk about、uh, how ketamine treatments、uh, can affect that, and the the work that he's doing in、um, in this domain,、uh, specifically setting up a、uh, ketamine fund. And he's here with us in Utah, and I'm so delighted and thrilled to have him on the show today. Love it, you guys got a little intro. <laughs>、uh, it's、beautiful. good to see you, man.、Yeah, good to、too. have you here. Great to be here, Zappy. I'm so thrilled to have you. This is this is amazing. How、um, everything collide, you know, coalesced, and and I met you, and I got invited to this uh, um, uh, meeting event that that you guys、uh, put together over here in Utah to talk about ketamine fund uh, uh, and, uh, and and everything that's you know that's going around in that in that space. So I am so thrilled. This is yeah, like this, this is, is amazing synchronicity. You know, synchronicity. To be with you yesterday at that event, and then to be here this morning, and just to be able to share this is is amazing. So I just want to、uh, briefly. T- I mean, you you really for for most you really don't need introduction. You've been around in the documentary、uh, filmmaking industry. You've been um, uh, you've been uh, um, shining the light on on uh, what these uh, 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 plant medicines can can do. Uh, ayahuasca and and、uh, we gonna, th- those are the topics topics we're going to be talking、yes. about today. So ayahuasca and ketamine. I and, call them like catalysts. Catalysts. You know, like these are like these transformative catalysts that can like break you through your maybe your reality, and they show you like a broader reality. And to me, that's you know what life's about. It's like trying to. Get a bigger and bigger and bigger picture, and that can come from failures and successes, and and sometimes you get in a place where you need something that's just gonna like bust you through. And I think not being afraid to kind of you know get busted through once in a while is like a good way to expand. Yeah, getting a, a different perspective that will allow you to see the broader picture is 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 huge. Yeah, and so you've done some work in that. You are. Uh, you, you produced、uh, um, the reality of truth、yes. with、uh, with Michelle Rodriguez, yeah,、uh, um, famous actress. One of the、um, she was in Avatar, yeah, and and so、um, we put up a little、uh, um, collage of all the things、Beautiful. that you <laughs> amazing. So how was it? How was it working with with Michelle on on that、uh, in that whole trip? Because、um, that was the ay- ayahuasca.、Uh, yeah, trip,、right? this was you know、uh, I talk about it a little bit in the reality of truth, but I was going through my own midlife crisis where I had. Done everything society told me to do. I got a job. I went to, you know, I got married. I had kids. I made money, and everything that they tell you, you do this, you're going to be totally happy. Right. And I did it all. I was like, I'm happy, but like, I there's something missing. I just, I'm not totally fulfilled. And I think, based on some of the experiences I'd had earlier in my life with psychedelics that were really positive, I said, Wow, you know, I think I got to go really deep inside of myself. I I looked outside. Now I think I got to really try to go inside in like a conscious way, and so I I knew about ayahuasca, which is a vine that grows in the rainforest, and another plant, a leaf that they put together, and you drink this brew, this tea, and you have this conscious transformation for several hours.、Uh, I'd always been told that there was like this feminine, divine energy that was with you, and I thought, wow, like this is I have to try this, you know? Right. So. Uh, the guy、uh, Laurent Levy, who helped me to direct that movie t- together with him,、uh, he knew Michelle Rodriguez, and they were friends. And so、uh, we, we, I said, let's get some cameras. We'll go down to Peru. We'll get some of our friends and do it. And he said, oh, let me reach out to Michelle. We, I, we reached out. She's like, come over to my house right now. You know, we went over her house, hung out, and she's like, gives me her passport. I was like, "Well, this is crazy. Like, you know, you you know me kind of, but like, you're giving me your passport." And she's like, "Yeah, I'm in. Like, let's do this." You know, and I was like, "All right, let's do this." And total synchronicity. A friend of ours owned some lodges along the Inca Trail in Peru, so we knew we had a good set and setting, a good guide for the ayahuasca. Because some of these like plant medicines, it's very, very important that you not only are in the right you know place, but you're with the right people. 
And so a lot of times that means a shaman who can guide you through the experience, pull you out of some dark spot, give you like the whole experience so that you have the best possible experience. Right. Set and setting is it's critical. Uh, uh, one of the book authors I was reading about, um, um, uh, Dr. Fadiman, he's uh, he's. Uh, He's uh, he doing a lot. He was doing a lot of research about psychedelics in the academia, and and it seems like we're we we're shift we're coming back to, to sort of a renaissance of uh, looking back at psychedelics in in terms of medicines, um, yeah. addressing issues that people have right now, and obviously the big uh, part and portion of that is PTSD and our veterans and the suicide rates that are happening. And then, uh, in general, uh, um, uh, depression that, that's happening in our society. People are, um, how, how many, uh, I think you mentioned, how many veterans are dying? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, 22 veterans a day take their life. And in America, 120 people or so commit suicide. So when you think about that, and then you think about each person that commits suicide, it's like their families affected, their jobs affected, their neighborhood, their community. It's like a ripple that's horrible. And then, you know, that's 50,000 people a year that are committing suicide that have this ripple. It's like every single one of those people that you could change and not commit suicide, you, you, you know, you're affecting so many people. So that's where, you know, when we wind up talking about ketamine, uh, that's the number one side effect of this ketamine, which is a major catalyst, one of these that can break you through. And... For that to be the number one side effect that it breaks suicidal ideation is just incredible. So, you know, this ketamine fund that we started, it has a uh, stated goal of bringing down suicide rates by 75%. And I think like right now in society, we're so affected by the media and all this stuff that's happening. It's so overwhelming. And now you're living longer and longer. So if you just are living in this external world trying to be happy, you're going to be miserable. So the only way to get happiness is to go inside of yourself, get in tune with your own frequency vibration, and then you bring that out into your waking life and walking around. And when you bring that type of energy, your own energy uh, to life, everything is, it's like a miracle. You're looking around like, wow, this is incredible. Everything that happened to me, it's not happening to me, it's happening for me. So you have that type of realization. And so I, you know, just to come back to Michelle and this whole journey that we did, um, we went down to the jungle and we sat with a shaman and uh, we wanted to take like a, a heroic dose because we were, we had gone all the way down to Peru. We had cameras with us. We were like, let's not come up short, you right. know, we better like, <laughs> you know, pour a double Deliver. helping. So I was like, all right, double, you know, Michelle, ting. One other guy, this guy, Dan, her and myself and um, the three of us, we were like ready to go. Everybody else on the crew and everything was like, I don't know, maybe I'll do it, maybe not. You know, of course, they all after a week wound up sitting in the ceremony and doing mm -hmm. the ayahuasca. But the three of us were like, let's go all the way. This guy, Dan, he's a he's royalty. He's like a count from uh, Europe. He's in the tabloids and everything. A young guy. He's like. Uh, families, the McMillan Publishing Company and stuff. So he's, you know, I looked at them and I'm like, Michelle, she's got a lot to lose and he's got a lot to lose. And like, I don't really have that much to lose. You know, I just, <laughs> you know, my family, I guess, you know, for sure. But uh, these people are taking the leap. I'm going to take the leap. And so, you know, we drank the heroic dose. We had a great well, What is shaman. heroic dose? Um, it, for those who... It's it just a... a a very large, large dose, dose where maybe it's, you know, double what somebody would generally take to try to get there. We were like, we're getting there. I don't know, triple. It might have been a triple, but it was just, you know, let's do this. So uh, the experience is incredible. I mean, you know, this ayahuasca, like they say, it's got a feminine spirit energy to it. And, you know, you're, sh you're shown, you know, all these different things in your life. You're shown... Uh, you know, there's an opportunity where after you go through kind of some of the, you know, the elements that you have to go through and the first one you go through is basically breaking your fear of death. Because as I was sitting there in this ayahuasca, I was just, you know, sitting there having this experience. And then all of a sudden I was like, I came into myself and I was like, oh my God, I just died. I, I just died right now. And I, 
it was so real. I knew it was real. I knew I could like go into it and die or I could pull back out of it if that was the case, if I wanted to. But I looked around and it was so dynamic what was happening in death. I was just like, wow, if this is death, like it's so dynamic. I don't really know that I want to go into that right this moment, but like, wow, this is interesting to find out if this is death, this is incredible. And as soon as I like embraced that, I, I, I smoothed through it. A lot of the other people that were in the room, they fought that moment. They were like, oh no, I'm, I'm me. I'm not, I'm not going to die. And they just fought it in the ayahuasca. Like if you fight it, it gives you double and you fight that it's going to give you double. So it's like, for whatever reason I went in, as I always try to coach people when they're having one of these kind of transformative sessions is don't try to get a question answered. Just try to say, I want to expand my consciousness. That's all I want to do. Expand my consciousness. And secondly, I'm not going to take anything seriously that happens. I'm going to just approach it like that. And I think if you approach it like that, you're going to have a good experience. You're going to get through the hard part like easier. And so I broke through that death thing. I was like, I never have to fear death again. This is incredible. I, for whatever reason, I'm manifesting myself into this physical reality and I'm going to come back out of this. But I realized right in that moment, I said, if I come out of this thing and I'm physically back in this manifestation, I'm not going to waste a day. I'm going to go hundred percent every day because for whatever reason I manifested myself here and I didn't go into that space. So, wow. Like I come out, I'm like, no fear of death. Wow. That's great. And same thing. Michelle said that and, and on and on Lamar Odom, we're going to talk about that. And he said that, you know, in his ketamine experience and his ibogaine experience that we'll talk about, he lost his fear of death. And once you lose that, it's like so freeing to everything else you're going to do. Right. Because with, with death, the, the, the main thing that's attached to death is fear and fear of death. But once you have that transformational experience where you see that, okay, there's stuff after death maybe, but, or like, I feel connected with everything. It's like, you just have a totally different perspective. And, um, what I hear from people that have gone through the ayahuasca experience, like it is a life transformational, um, experience. Yeah. Um, unpacking things uh, many people do say that they get lessons out of it basically yeah. some some kind of a teaching that comes out of it in in, in terms of like what they specifically need to know yeah. that's that's the cool part is i think you know it's going to give you it's the energy intelligence of the plant that's what really blows you away when you're in this experience you're like wow this is like an ancient plant you know tens of thousands millions of years old and they've been using it for tens of thousands of years, but the energy intelligence is so high. You're safe. You're get you're getting the experience you need to have. And so when I got through that death part, I was I got to a certain point where I was in this transcended space, like as if you're meditating for 30 years in a cave and you hit this perfect spot and you're just in nothingness and you know you can go into the future or the past. You can ask any question you want. And I, I talk about some of this in the movie in the reality of truth, but I said, oh, I guess why do bad things happen? Like, I'm going to ask a big question, like why, you know? And as soon as I asked that, I was like ripped back out into space. I was like being pulled out into space and the earth and the, and the universe, uh, our galaxy was moving back. And I moved past, like I say, you know, when you're a kid and you go, but what's past space? And they're right. like, more space. And you're like, yeah, but what's past that? And more space. I was, I was out there. And I could see like everything in the universe, like contained, like God would look at it. And I was like, I was going to have a heart attack, but I felt this like spirit presence with me. And I was like, okay, you know, I, I feel, you know, some kind of spirit. I'm, I'm going to just okay. look at this, you know? And then the spirit spoke to me in words for the first time. And it said, do you see that? It's perfect. And I, I looked at it and I was like, wow, you know what? It is really perfect. Like if something happens over here, it's just going to get made up over here. It's just this things, the whole thing's perfect. And I was like, wow, you know, what a lesson. And so then in that moment, probably the biggest like change that happened to me where uh, the spirit said to me, do you know how you're breathing right now? And I'm looking at this thing and it says, do you know how you're breathing right now? And I was like, no, I don't know how I'm breathing. He said, do you know how you're growing your hair? You're doing it, but do you know how? And I was like, 
no. And then God, and I realized this was God at that moment. I was like, and then God said, what makes you think I need your help? And I was like, <laughs> shit, you're right. I was like, I don't even know how I'm breathing. I don't do that for two minutes and I die. I'm like, what am I going to get all upset? Because these people aren't listening to me. They're fighting. It's like, no, I don't even know how I'm breathing. And God was like, just enjoy it. It's perfect. And I was like, wow, it's I'm just going to enjoy it. And boom, bam, I was like sucked, but I was right back in the room. I was like, wow, <laughs> like this is insane, you know? But again, always feeling that spirit presence is the thing that with the ayahuasca kind of gets you through. And the day before we did the ayahuasca, we hiked up to this mountain, like 17,000 feet. And we took a plant medicine called San Pedro, which is a cactus. And in that, in the movie, The Reality of Truth, you see that Michelle Rodriguez had a, an experience there where she dropped 20 years of heavy, heavy therapy and heavy pain. She just dropped it right in I that moment. I saw that moment, video. Yeah, that was know? very powerful. She it was, was talking really about really cool. And just to see it and to see her shift, you know, she says, I, I came into my femininity. It's like maybe about time, you know, I'm such a tomboy. But now, I, and I just, I was seeing it in her energy. I was like, how can this have shifted and then after the ayahuasca, she said, you know, I feel so in tune with my own frequency. She said, when I go back, I'm going to, I have the, I have the strength right now to go write on the movies that I'm involved with in the Fast and Furious. She said, they've been asking me to write for years, but I always felt a little insecure. Like maybe I was just the actress and she's like, I'm writing with the team. And she wrote herself in the bigger parts. And I'm like, wow, like, you know, to see that happen and. 48 hours and somebody you're just like wow and so i would just you know go hang out with her had a few more you know psychedelic experiences with her you know in different places and we would talk about our experience and then i'd see her you know a month later two months we just i'd get a camera and we just talk about it so i have a lot of amazing stuff that i'm going to bring out soon that um is kind of like reality of truth part two where a lot of the stuff that i didn't get to use it's so good uh, from, you know, her and Deepak and Marianne Williamson and Ram Dass and all these people that I was only able to use a little bit in the movie, but it's so much good stuff. But to see her transformation, and then she talks about how her friend Paul Walker died in a car accident during this process and how the ayahuasca affected her reality around that and how she dealt with that. And then some of the, you know, crazy successes you know even some of the successes when you have you know that type of big time success you if you're not resonating at a very strong frequency you're just going to get pulled in every direction but i could see that she was just like really like rock steady in her uh frequency and it's like wow you know this is we got to get this out to everybody and i came back to the united states and i was like oh my god i was telling my friends you got to go down to peru and sit with a shaman they were like zap you out of your mind like if i tell my family right now that i'm going to sit with a shaman in the jungle they're gonna like put me in a mental institution you right know? so i can't do it and i was like oh, i was really frustrated and i was like i hope i can find some western medicine approach that would be like my ayahuasca experience and then boom of course there i see ketamine right away i'm like right. wow as soon as i said that i somebody comes to me and ketamine and i was like wow what's that and they said wow this is a 50 year old fda approved anesthetic it's the number one anesthetic used by oral surgeons on children because it's so safe and it doesn't affect your breathing but it puts you into a present moment awareness state that you have to just experience and it takes you into that present moment and some of the side effects are you know breaking suicidal ideation curing addiction curing depression i was like i have to try this you know this is <laughs> it's funny how you mentioned no side effects yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> so you won't want to kill yourself that's a, one of the side effects yeah it's a great side effect <laughs> great you know effect. Oh. so um as I was like finding this, I also had one more experience that was really important for me, which was um, I, there's a plant medicine called ibogaine that comes from a plant called iboga. It's an African root. And I had heard that this breaks a heroin addiction in eight or 12 hours, something like that. It can break Amazing. a meth addiction. And I'm like, how is that possible? I can't, I can't understand it. I'm just gonna have to go do it. And so I went down to Costa Rica, got myself in a good set and setting, 
this ibogaine it's you know it's cardiotoxic so that you have to have a doctor with you so you can't have your, heart issues to uh when yeah it's going to slow down your heart rate right so you really so need you have a to be healthy there. and have it yeah yeah and you just got to be in the right spot but other than that i mean it's pretty safe i mean the only people really that have had you know problems are people who've done major drugs before right before right. or they have some existing heart condition heart condition beyond right. that it's pretty safe but you want to be with a shaman because they're kind of guiding the experience. You can talk to them during the whole experience um, and get advice during that experience. So I was like, I have to do it. I go, I do it. And it was probably the most cha one of the most challenging experiences of my life. How it's, so? Um, you know, the analogy is that the ayahuasca is the mother. You know, it's hugging you the whole time as you're having this experience. Fem this, that, the femininity of yeah. that. And just you're caring. being loved while it's happening and then the san pedro is the father and then the ibogaine is the grandfather like your angry grandfather <laughs> who's like oh you want to see why you're messed up oh no problem like kick Boom. you right right <laughs> into the you know situation so uh where ayahuasca was a lot of you know imagery and things it was there was there was an, uh, sometimes not a lot of clarity to what was happening you had to interpret but the ibogaine the thing that's incredible is here's this African root that's probably, you know, I don't know, as old as time. And it's a technology that you're seeing that's so advanced in the technology. And I'll give you a couple of examples of it. But um, the Ibogaine uh, is a, there's a tribe called the Bwiti, uh, a religion called Bwiti. And they use the Ibogaine as a sacrament, but they're doing it to meet an ancestor it's an ancestor based religion so you take they feed you the ibogaine until you either see the relative and have that experience or you die so it's like a serious thing but it's meant to get you to be able to you know go into the past or you know whatever you need to do and what and i mean technology is like i had a couple experiences where i thought like you know something like i said oh, i wonder why um you know, a family member acts a certain way. I, you know, I wonder why my parents act, you know, I have a certain, and a, a Google type browser comes up and I'm, you know, in this psychedelic experience, but a browser comes up and I see these coordinates going into the browser. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? You know, and all this, you know, all these searches are like minority report thing happening. I'm like, oh my God, what the hell's going on? And then all of a sudden I see the earth and it goes, and it turns and then I go into the situation and I'm like sitting in my grandparents uh, country house and my parents are like in their 20s I'm not even alive right and I witnessed them having this conversation that explains the whole thing and I'm just like oh my god like I just I got to forgive this whole situation I have a totally different new perspective on like wow and I see this and then boom, I'm off into the next scenario, you know, where, um, again, just incredible technology happening. And I had a, another experience where in the Ibogaine, um, where they told me beforehand, they said, pick two or three people that are either dead or alive that you want to go have a conversation with at the soul level. And I was like, I didn't take it overly serious, but I was, you know, thinking about it and you think, oh, I don't know, Buddha, Jesus, Ma, Einstein, who, who should I like have a conversation with? But again, I didn't overly take it serious. I was on the plane ride down to uh, Costa Rica and I see a movie on the airline flight with Chris Farley, the actor. Right. And I was like, oh, Chris Farley, he'd be like cool to hang out with. That would be right. cool. And I put it away and I go down, I do the thing and the shaman's very interactive in it. You could be saying, you know, you could be walking down a street and somebody's trying to get you to come into a building and you say to the shaman, hey, somebody's trying to get me to go into this building. And the guy says, what kind of building is it? And you're like, I don't know, like a government? And they're like, not too much structure. Keep going, keep going. You keep walking, you know, you have some experience. Amazing. And so I'm walking in this experience and I come to this cul-de-sac at night and kind of like a uh, suburban setting like I grew up in. I walk, it's kind of dark, it's a little, there's weird stuff happening, you know, and I say, I see this house and there's a window and there's like a party going on. I said, there's like a party at a house, should, you know, should I go in there? And the guy's like, yeah, go in. I go in, I walk in, I look around, I look in the back and Chris, Chris Farley's Farley is there. there. 
And he goes, he like waves me over. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. Like I'm, I'm sitting there going, I can't believe this is going down. And I go over and we talk and we're hanging out and we have some drinks and we're just, everything is amazing, you know? And then all of a sudden these people in the party, they start t laughing at somebody and they say something and then everybody's laughing and, we're, and it's kind of a little dark, you know? And then somebody else is like, yeah, and then everybody's like laughing at this person and we're like, and Chris Farley and I were like looking at each other like, what's going on here? Like, this is like, this is bad, you know? Like, this isn't even funny. It's like kind of like twisted, you know? And it gets darker and darker. And everybody's like laughing. And Chris Farley looks at me and he's like, did you see that, Zappy? He's like, this is why you can't make everybody laugh. Try to make everybody laugh. It's like, listen to what they're laughing at. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I was like, holy shit, this is like probably what killed you. You like it had to make everybody laugh. And he's like, yeah. And boom, I was in a different experience. Wow. And I was like, wow, like that was as real as real, you know? And so when you're in that experience, like they say, you're, you're at the soul level. So even if it's somebody that's alive, you can talk to them. And it's just like, you have those direct experiences and it alters how you think about things. And, you know, I have a friend who had a, an alcohol issue and he decided to do the iboga and basically for him, he was cycled through like every party that he had ever been to. And he could see that when he took like the third drink, second sip, his energy would change and he would become kind of rude and gross. And, you know, it just uh, not inhibited the person he wanted to be. Yeah. Dark, right. And so he, it started cycling him through and it cycled him through. He said it cycled him through 300 of them. He was like crying. He was like, stop. He's like, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I'll never. And it cycled him through another like 200 more, oh you know, God. and he's just, he came out of it, went back to New York. He's like, I can go to a, every night to a function. It's like, I can have one glass of wine. That's it. He goes, I put it down. It's like, I would never have the third drink. What a great, what a great set of lessons, right? And I want to I want to I want to pull you back to the conversation about um, uh, psychedelics, which is so we talked about ayahuasca, ibogaine, and uh, and uh, and ketamine a little bit, and we're going to dive a little bit deeper. But all of those are, and psilocybin is another one, yeah. the mushroom from the mushroom, um, and all of those are psych psychedelics, and they have a um, bad rap, so to speak, right? I mean, some of them are illegal mm -hmm. in in U.S. at least. Uh, schedule one, um, uh, so no medical, can't no, even study it. Can, yeah, it can't even study it anymore. And they have a sort of like a stigma to them right now. Uh, and I think we're kind of shifting back. Uh, there's more and more studies being done. Johns Hopkins is doing uh, um, studies on psilocybin and, and other psychedelics yeah. being used in uh, uh, treating uh, suicidal ideation, PTSD, especially with ketamine. Yeah. And, uh, and and uh, and and then also depression and uh, end of life uh, uh, with with uh, with uh, cancer patients. Yeah. And so there is more and more that's happening right now that's bringing it back as as a source of these plant medicines, these uh, catalysts, as mm -hmm. as you put it, are they have use? So we should we should deal with rescheduling this from from this schedule one sure. in it because there is practical use for for, for that. But they do ha they do carry that stigma. Um, around them. Uh, why do you think that's still the case? Well, I think, you know, fortunately, nature is like very intelligent. Okay. So nature knows that people are suffering, they have disease, mental health, trauma, and it's bringing out these plants. It's bringing out cannabis and allowing people to see that, hey, you know what? With the internet and the democratization of media, people can see for themselves and try cannabis for the first time and say, wow, you know what? Maybe this is good for me for my arthritis or some my stomach or something like that so they go beyond this misinformation that happened and so i think cannabis is coming out nature's bringing it out but it's exposing that so that people can see that hey psilocybin mushrooms can be incredible for you know depression uh, ayahuasca can be incredible for this use. Ibogaine from break addiction, ketamine, you know, so nature's doing this. It's got a great plan. And I, I take a lot of comfort in, you know, when you see how crazy the world is and the state that it's in and people's situations, you go, this is hopeless. You know, this is just going to go off the cliff, but I can see that right before it goes off the cliff, nature's got this plan of bringing these catalysts through 
and it's all going to work out. It's totally balanced. It's fine. And so, you know, a lot of that stigma comes from, you know, the pharmaceutical companies and in particular, you know, like I said, when I came back from Peru and I wanted everybody to have the experience I had, I wound up finding this ketamine and I realized that this is FDA approved. It's used on children. Uh, it's very safe. Why is it being vilified? Why? What's happening? And I and the realization was that the drug companies, it was so old and it was off patent that they couldn't make any money on it. They wanted to use their SSRIs. Their what Zan are SSRIs? That's like Xanax and Zoloft. It's your typical it's antidepressants. antidepressants. So as ketamine was being realized for what it was decades ago, the antidepressant movement was happening. So they just suppressed it. They said, this is addictive. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's going to make you animals. crazy. It'll make you crazy. It's to be not to be used. And what the reason that they found out that there was something special in it is that they were using it uh, in like Vietnam on battlefields and things like that. And when they were amputating somebody's arm in the battlefield, they would use ketamine because it's very fast acting. It wears off quick. It doesn't, you don't have to have an anesthesiologist. So the guy would get his two arms cut off and the next day he'd be in the infirmary and he'd crack a joke. And they were like, wait a minute, this guy has cracked a joke in right. two years. He just got lost his arms. Like, what's he joking about? You know, and they said, oh, maybe something with maybe ketamine. something with ketamine. Right. So Yale University did an extended study, very large study. And they realized that in a high dose, you can't really do as much work as you can. But if you give somebody a low dose of it, they have like a 45 minute experience. And then when the experience is over in the hours after the ketamine metabolizes and that metabolization grows new neural pathways in your brain. So neurogenesis. Actual neurogenesis. So you're really capable of rewiring your brain, making new connections in your, in your brain and, uh, and, and changing how you think about things. Yeah. And those new connections, they can be built around patterns that you have in your brain that may have been heredity, they may be in your DNA, maybe some situation caused it. But when you grow these pathways around this trauma and depression, it's basically setting you at where you're really at. You're, it's not, it's allowing you, your brain, because ketamine is different. It's not a hallucinogenic, it's a dissociative. So what that means is it's like basically like disassociating your left and right brain, allowing them to communicate freely without your ego getting involved beyond even the human level. So when that happens and you grow neural pathways, it's amazing. Uh, Dr. Robert Heemstra here in Utah, who we're doing the ketamine uh, with veterans. And we'll talk on, about Bob. We'll talk about, he's an amazing guy. But he said that the most recent research is that you have an area of your brain that's called the default mode network. It's an ancient pa part of your brain. and you have a, a, a mechanism in there called your lateral habanula. And that records all the stresses that you've ever had in your life. And when that gets overwhelmed, it tips, it goes into this burst mode and it shuts off your dopamine production. So you're basically getting no dopamine. If that's your happiness, you're getting none. The first time you do the ketamine, it reverses the burst mode and all of a sudden you start getting dopamine. So it's, you know, the reported success rates with ketamine are like 75 plus percent. But a lot of that is just like the person's dopamine turns back on. They're just like, wow, you know what? I'm, I'm happy. Uh, I'm, I'm still alive. I yeah. can still do good things in and, my life. And I would say that the most miraculous thing about the ketamine, which I think people think is some kind of synthetic drug that's been manufactured, but really it's a salt. It's a crystal. So they put some crystal, some salts and minerals together in this ketamine crystal forms and they take that crystal. And so you have this crystal that is capable of unlocking your brain, allowing you to use 80 plus percent of your brain. And when that happens, when you take the ketamine, it's usually given an inter intramuscular shot or an IV for 35, 40 minutes. Um, when that happens, you go into what I would call present moment awareness where there's no future and there's no past. And you, it's hard to even imagine that when I'm like talking about it, but when you're in that spot and there's literally no future, no past, you can live like a thousand lifetimes in that 30, 40 minutes. And so much work you can do, so much you can look at and you have that experience. And then 
as the ketamine wears off, um, you, you know, it wears off and 15 minutes later, you get up, you walk out, you go get a smoothie, you're just like, wow. Like, uh, and what happens is a lot of people report and especially even like people have addiction and things, they, ha they have this realization on the first treatment, they go, wow, I just realized that all that stuff that happened to me, it happened to me, but it's not me, I'm me. And they're just like, Wow, you know, and and so when you think about like how could this break uh, a suicidal thoughts, what happens is the person goes into this present moment awareness, in like God consciousness where they maybe probably never been before. They're in a relaxed state where they can step back and look from different perspectives, have a lot more empathy as they're having that experience. But when they step out of that, before they step out of that in the ketamine. Uh, you know, I think when people are going to kill themselves, it's like either I keep doing what I'm doing or I kill myself. But when the, in the ketamine, it opens up like a dozen different opportunities, a different possibilities. possibilities. And they look at that and they're like, wow, you know what? I'm not limited. I could do this and then maybe do that. And then it'll lead to this. And I like doing this and I, I'll keep liking doing. And just, they come out and they're just like, you know what? I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to like, you know, do my thing. And you like see that. And it's so rare to see something, which is why I love these catalysts is you don't have to wait months or years to see if this thing's going to take effect. You have, you know, these instant transformations. And this kind of leads me to like what I would say my purpose, I think is, you know, or my base set of beliefs is that we're having an empathy crisis right now. That's what's happening is people, you wanna care about somebody else and people across the world and the water supply 50 years. You wanna care, but you just don't have the empathy to really do it and you start thinking about it and then your phone rings and you're like, oh, you're distracted over Constant here. Constant distraction, social media taken to extremes, uh, binge watching, binge eating, all these uh, different uh, coping mechanisms that people have in this highly stressful environment. Uh, yeah. And you're not, you're, you're able to feel a little bit for other people, but you're not able to put yourself in their shoes. And so the only way I've seen people get instantly more empathy is to have a near death experience or to use one of these catalysts that breaks them through. And so my belief is if we got a critical mass of people to go inside, come out with more empathy, that when they come out with more empathy, if we get a critical mass of those people, we could solve any problem we have. Violence, eco-destruction, it's like, it's so easy to solve, but you just have to have people that are looking at it with total empathy, that caring about the person on the other side of the world or the person that's gonna live 50 years from now. They've actually been in that person's shoes in that experience, so they come out with more empathy. And I think like, once we get to there, and I think ketamine's gonna be a, a critical pathway because, you know, ayahuasca and these different amazing plant medicines, they're, they have been stigmatized and they, you have, there's a lot that is hard to access about them, but this ketamine, it's like people are gonna go in for depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation, and they're gonna come out with more empathy and they're gonna be part of that critical mass and they're gonna think, wow, you know what? We can solve these things. Let's, let's think differently. Right, that's, that's, that's amazing. So I, learning a little bit more about ketamine and, and, re and reading and listening to some of the um, experiences that people went through, especially veterans uh, with, with uh, P severe uh, PTSD, some things that they re relive constantly, they're stuck in that, in that moment, uh, traumatic moment that happened mm -hmm. to them. And um, with ketamine, I've, I've heard that literally, like, like you said, the ego kind of gets separated, peeled off, and the experience is almost like I'm watching this as almost like in uh, a third person. And what I like to call it is witnessing presence. Mm -hmm. You're in that present moment and you're just witnessing to, to what was happening to this, this body this, this, uh, that was experiencing it. And here's the experience. It's almost like watching a TV show. And while that's happening is uh, when that neurogenesis is happening, when your brain is re, re, little, literally rewiring the way you think about things, mm -hmm. it says, oh, you know what? This happened to me, but I, now I see it that it's as a separate thing. So I can put it over here mm -hmm. and I can watch it from this distance yeah. instead of like, it's, I'm not, it's like, I'm not angry. 
I have anger. And and then once you have that as a sep separate um, entity, you can right. put it somewhere else. And even, and, I would say, even you, you say, I don't have anger. I have acceptance that this thing happened and I have acceptance that I'm not perfect and I have, you know, all this empathy for yourself. You will wind up having this empathy for yourself where you're like, I'm, I gotta let myself off the hook where I'm like now, I don't even know how I'm breathing. Like, I will not get worked up because, like, what do I know? I mean, nothing. Right. So it's, you know, kind of that magical experience. And I think, um, you know, Ketamine, Timothy Leary, the great, you know, 60s icon of psychedelics, um, he was up against a much tougher thing back then because you had ABC, NBC, and CBS and a few newspapers. And if they said, you're wrong, you're just, it's over. Now we have the internet and media and stuff like that. You can't suppress the quality the and communication, the, the exchange of information about how 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 this affects a lot of people all over the place because everybody can share their experience right now versus back in the sixties everything was was channelized and was going through these specific outlets. Like yeah, you said. and so he said he has a a model of the brain. He calls it the eight areas of the brain. He says you have your left brain, that's your survival brain, like your lizard brain. It's just programmed to scan for you know, uh, danger, danger, danger. Right. And he said, on this side, your right side, you have your evolutionary brain that's constantly evolving. Uh, he said, you, you can affect these different areas with different energies, different substances. So he said, the fourth area over here on your left brain, if you affect it with alcohol, it's going to accentuate all of these fear-based things. He said, on your, once you start to trigger your right brain with you know, the fifth area with marijuana, the sixth area with mushrooms, the seventh area with LSD, high doses, and ayahuasca. And then he said, the eighth area of your brain, the one that you could allows you to use the supercomputer that you have right here, the way that you access that is using ketamine. And that's, you know, and, decades ago. And who ago. was saying that? This was Timothy Leary. Oh, Timothy Leary. Years ago. So it's like, when you look at that model and Timothy Leary says, you know, when you, you have the supercomputer, you can connect it to, you know, uh, other, you know, alien life. You might even be able to connect with yourself from the future, come back to help yourself in the present, you know, things that we think are really far out. But he's like, why do you have the supercomputer and how do you access this thing? And to have the realization that this ketamine, this crystal that has a certain frequency and all of these catalyst you're basically taking a certain frequency whether it's uh wood you know alkaloids or these ketamine crystals and you put them in your energy and then you have to synthesize that with your energy and when you come out of that you, if if it's a significant catalyst you're going to be vibrating back at your so like resonance it's almost like a you know, uh, strings in the guitar like one and then the other one starts vibrating yeah. and gets some of that energy. And Exactly. And same thing with, you know, food. And I was lucky somebody, somebody taught me, um, you know, 25 years ago or so, they taught me this Kabbalistic uh, philosophy and this Kabbalistic meditation. And the Kabbalistic tradition is like an oral tradition in the Jewish tradition where it goes along with the Bible and the Torah right. and all this stuff. But it's, this is like the actual stuff that's the gold. It's like, how do you go inside? How do you, you know, see the universe? And it was pulled out of the religion or left in the, um, in the oral tradition. And so many people are just following this, you know, thing that doesn't really make sense if you're just looking at it on a, you know, story basis. So this person taught me some of these basic truths of the universe that mm -hmm. Kabbalah explains. They taught me how to do a meditation, which thank God they taught me. I've been doing it for 25 years to help me to go inside. But what I realized is amazing about these plant medicines and things is after I did them and I did the ketamine, when I sit down to meditate where it used to take me a while to like, you know, transcend, it's like now I just close my eyes and I can see a pathway. You know, I can see, oh, I can follow that. And I just follow the pathway. And I just, you know, instantly transcend and go to back to these different experiences. So I think the meditation is very incorporated with these plants. But, you know, to have that uh, direct experience. And, and so in that learning about that, they even taught me about food. And they said, this food that you think is food, you know, the banana that's sitting there, this is just, you know, trillions of atoms spinning right. at a certain frequency. And then you take that and you put it inside your frequency. And then you have to you know, 
basically interact with interact it with that you have to stabilize it and so if you're let's say eating meat and maybe it's got some you know death component to it and trauma of the animal or whatever and then you have to synthesize that it's going to be much tougher if you you know take something that's you know natural from the earth and you it's vibrating at a, a frequency that's easier for your your frequency to stabilize then right. It's just going to be easier. Interesting. Provided it doesn't have pesticides on top of it, which is another energy. Yeah, <laughs> it's another energy. But again, I think like, you know, if your intent is good in what you're trying to do, even you could, you know, like Wim Hof, the breathing expert, he's like, you yeah. could eat poison. Yeah, you can literally drink poison like him and just be fine because he just is uh synthesizing that was an that. amazing uh yeah i was watching that how they it was in the in a hospital uh so we're talking about yeah uh yeah vim hoff who's a uh iceman they they i think i guess they dubbed him iceman he like multiple records where he's like running and like he's running he's in, in shorts Antarctica yeah, she's in that yeah he's no like running on. to the base of uh mount everest in his shorts without shoes and like uh, you know in, like snow and everything and it's unbelievable and, and he was talking about how through breathing and, and all of that how you can uh, uh you know uh, modify i guess change the energy and how you interact you with things get you back slow to down. your energy yeah you, all you have to do is vibrate back to that same frequency and anything that you taken or done it's right. not it's it's irrelevant An unbelievable person actually i did some of the exercises that he has on on youtube and he's guiding you through yeah, how to breathe and you literally get these tingling sensations in your fingertips and then you, you get out of this and you're just like so pumped and like so positive mm -hmm. this is just breathing like literally yeah. getting high on breathing yeah it's amazing it really is you I know love. there's like a, there's so much psychology of the mind you know and uh and there's a story i love i'm like paraphrasing the story but uh, apparently, like Viktor Frankl, who's a well-known uh, person in history, uh, he was being liberated from the concentration camps in Germany. And when they, when the Americans were liberating, they everybody was like skin and bones. They were just like it was like looking at skeletons. And they looked at Viktor Frankl, right. and the guy was like in great shape. He looked great. And they were like, "What's with this guy? Was was he stealing everybody's food? What was he doing? You know, why isn't he starving like everybody else?" I said, no, he wasn't stealing anybody's food. We don't, we don't know. So they said to him, like, what's, aren't you, aren't you starving? And he said, no, I'm fasting. And they were like, whoa, wait a minute. Just the psychology of this guy told himself he's fasting. He's giving away his food. He was perfect, you know? And so, you know, your mind is the most powerful thing that you possess. It, and it, I'm going to hijack this just for a second uh, because you stepped on on fasting. What are your thoughts on fasting, intermittent fasting? The, you know, it's, it's a happening yeah. thing right now. Have you done it? What are your thoughts on it? I've done it. Um, I've intermittent fasted. I like it. You know, I think it's like for me, it's just like a restriction kind of thing. You know, I eat vegan these days because when I learned that, you know, everything is energy and I had a psychedelic experience where I saw that everything was energy, I saw that. I was trillions of atoms spinning at a certain frequency and my friend was trillions of atoms. He was just a slightly different frequency. And then the chair was the same atoms, slightly different frequency. I said, whatever I'm going to put inside of myself, I got to look That's at it just as energy. energy. So yeah. I was like, I'm not going to eat animals, you know, and, and I just right before my daughter was born 14 years or so ago, I was vegetarian i was thinking oh i'm doing really good you know for the environment and animals and everything i thought about it, i'm like you know what it's so much violence on these animals to get the milk and all this stuff it's like i'm not really doing what i i say i'm doing and if i'm going to bring this kid into the world i can't do this and be you know committing all this violence towards these animals and then I, what i'm going to get all upset because you know some kid shoots up a school like of course you know, some people who are, you know, mentally off are going to do that because we're murdering like millions of animals every day. Like, of course it's going to happen. So if I want to create, you know, be in a less violent situation for my kid and my family, I'm going to have to like commit right now to like non-violence of animals. And so I went that path. Right. And so I just, to me, it's like, you know, in that I restrict what I'm eating and I think the fasting is incredible too, because it just, you know, intermittently, you know, let's say you're eating between 12 o'clock noon and eight o'clock at night, and then you can't eat after that. It's like you get more conscious about what you're eating, when you're eating it, you just, you're restricted from eating something. And when you do that type of restricting, it really kind of opens you up health-wise, mentally. So I, I really do like it. I would say 
I'm a bigger fan, to segue, I'm a bigger fan of microdosing. Uh, and this is, you know, using things like psilocybin mushrooms Let's in talk a about microdose. That. Yeah, this is... Um, so what is microdosing? So microdosing is basically taking what is usually about a tenth of the normal amount that you would take to have an experience. So let's say with a mushrooms, to have a real experience, you would take one gram of mushrooms. So it, it, what you do is instead of taking a full gram, you take a tenth of a gram. And okay. you're getting a subperceptual in the case of the mushrooms and most things that you microdose at that level. You're getting a subperceptual amount of energy from it. So the idea is that you take a tenth of a gram on, say, Mondays and Thursdays. And what I noticed from it, which has been incredible, and this is not just for me, but a lot of people, what happens is on the days that you microdose, you still go about your business, you're doing your work, you're with your kids, you're everything you can, you can do everything that you do. But once in a while, you'll just be like, you know, you'll look at the clouds and you'll be like, wow, those clouds are like so beautiful. I never saw that before. And then you go, oh yeah, I microdose today. Oh yeah. All right. You know, and so you're just like better, better version of yourself. You're just happy. Yeah. It's like, and when but I, not like high or anything, not it's like sub perceptual. You said, so like, you don't, you don't feel anything. It basically feels like I imagine people want to feel when they take an what? antidepressant. And so I'm always blown away by that. But I noticed that on the Tuesday and Wednesday in between, my decision making is like super clear. No mistakes. Just very, very clear. And I go, wow, you know, like this is what people want. And I think, you know, in X number of years, I won't even put a prediction on it. But things are starting to get legalized now. But I think general acceptance of the power of these things in a number of years, the psilocybin mushroom dosing, microdosing, it's going to be the norm and it's going to eliminate the need for all antidepressants because it's just such a, a good, clean boost of energy, but also putting you in your right frequency. Are you familiar with uh, Paul Stamets? Yeah. Mycologist. Amazing. um was listening to him on on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast, and he was talking about or like mushrooms in general, but you know, so psychedelic mushrooms and non psychedelic mushrooms. And one thing that uh, he mentioned, he said like exactly what you just said. They'll be like vitamins. Yeah, literally like vitamins. I, I think he said if microdosing a um, psilocybin with and stacking it with vitamin with niacin, niacin vitamin b3 yep. and uh lion's mane which yep. is another uh, mushroom yes. um that you can buy right now it's 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 not buy it at whole foods yeah yeah, yeah. or buy it at uh, from paul stamets because uh, he's like super careful how it's processed and everything yes. because he loves mushrooms um so if you stack all of that um, literally, uh, neurogenesis can happen in your brain, and they were doing studies on mice that they, you know, uh, treated like uh, chemically, so lobotomized their brains a little, you know, a little bit, and and then they gave them the the uh, these compounds, and literally within six weeks they created neural connections in their brains. Yeah. So it's an amazing thing. It really is. You know, I'm working with a group right now. We're developing our own, you know, stack. Some of them are similar to the Paul Stamet stack where we'll put like psilocybin mushrooms, 100 milligrams or 200 milligrams, which is like a 10th or 20th of a, of a full dose. We'll put it with lion's mane, cordyceps. These are things that are naturally going to build brain and even, you know, work on your, uh, you know, your whole system. And these are, you know, this is, this is revolutionary. I mean, I think it's probably, I talked to a lawyer who's doing a lot of the drafting of some of this legalization stuff in Oregon. And they've been involved in California. And they said right now it's legal in certain places, but probably in about a year and a half is when you're going to be able to actively produce them and, and commercially sell them. Really? So do you think uh, psilocybin and those schedule one, um, uh, uh, compounds right now which are illegal they'll go the same way that marijuana well actually you know at marijuana is still schedule one on a yeah. federal level <laughs> yeah i think they're gonna break i you know right now denver uh decriminalized oakland california decriminalized uh they're talking about berkeley they're talking about like major st other states uh illinois is talking about it so it's happening because you know the safety profile on these mushrooms is nobody's ever done. There's no other there's chemical, like, yeah, there's nothing. no other and pharmacological thing that's as safe as, as, as the... And the thing that is important is that 
the reason that, you know, some people have a problem, you know, you hear about maybe somebody, you know, jumps off a building and thinks they can fly or something like that. We've all heard, you know, different yeah. things is that these people need to be tested. They could be allergic to this thing. It's like a peanut allergy. You know, I don't know, 250 people right. or something die every year of a peanut allergy. It's like we just have to be able to test for these things. And when this thing is schedule one illegal to use or to you can't, you can't test. test this. So it's like if we just got smart about it as a society and we started to, you know, look at these things intelligently, we would have, be able to screen out anybody who shouldn't have them. And then we'd be able to use uh, them appropriately for everybody else, which is, you know, most people these days, I jokingly say that if you've turned on a television and watched it, you have PTSD. Because you can't turn on that TV and see, oh, you know, Kim Jong-un might nuke us and the water is dangerous and there's air pollution and there's nuclear fall on the way. You got PTSD right Constant there. Constant barrage of negative news. Yeah. yeah I, I, in our house, we, we pretty much are not watching TV at all in, in terms of like news and everything, mm -hmm. you know. We'll watch some movies and whenever we want, you know, things and cartoons for the kid, but, but like no news, no networks, because it's this constant onslaught of negative thing that's after another one, another one. And you're mm -hmm. right. When you're exposed to that, even if you're uh, consciously be like, ah, that's okay. It's just whatever. Right. Subconsciously that your brain is like still taking that in and that mm -hmm. energy, uh, that negativity is like within you. You're like, oh man, it's like the world is about to end every minute. It's like exactly. doomsday clock it's horrible. every minute. It's terrible. But thank God, like I said, nature's got a plan. It's bringing out these psychedelics. They're here to you know, let us go inside. They're here to stabilize our energy. And it's happening just, you know, in the nick of time. And and for me, ketamine, to segue to ketamine, could be the most miraculous. Right. So let's get back to, to that and the ketaminefund.org that, that you and Warren um, started. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what can be done right now that's legal right now yep. and um, and the work that you guys are doing. Where do you see this going? How did you guys start? Let's go with that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, having the realization about how incredible ketamine is for, you know, breaking suicidal ideation, working on addiction, depression, anxiety, you know, uh, Warren Gumpel, my partner in the ketamine fund, he would literally tell you that his life was saved by ketamine. He had a depressive episode. They put him on antidepressants. He tried everything. Nothing was working. He was pretty desperate. And somebody told him about ketamine after his first couple treatments. He felt like as good as he had felt in years and years. And he started to advocate in New York. He was advocating for a doctor. And I met him in Florida and we both realized, hey, we're both advocating for ketamine. Let's do this together and we'll like really, you know, go fast. And so as we looked at it, we said, look, the most vulnerable population is the veteran population. You got a super high suicide rate. You got depression, anxiety. They're on all kinds of medications. Let's show people that we can disrupt the 22 veterans a day that are killing themselves. If we can disrupt that, bring that number down to, you know, five a day, uh, you know, that is going to be so significant in the ripple effect these people deserve it. They, you know, put their life on the line. They saw horrible things. They were, you know, they had to come back and integrate back in society. It's like these people need the ketamine more than anybody. Let's dedicate our ketamine fund efforts in the beginning to veterans. Let's show with veterans that we can bring down the suicide rates. We can make these changes and then we can morph over to regular society. And so the ketamine funds, you know, stated goal is basically to have funds where if anybody in the United States in the beginning says that they're having suicidal thoughts, they're immediately within 24 hours, they're into a ketamine clinic near their house and it's paid for by the ketamine clinic. So there's no, if you're rich, you're poor, there's no excuse. It's just, Hey, if you're feeling a certain way, come in, have this incredibly safe treatment in a doctor's office and, you know, and the ketamine fund's going to pay for it. And so we, uh, through one of our partners in the Lamar Odom documentary that I'm going to talk about, uh, we, through one of our partners uh, in that film, he's here based in Utah. He's got a CBD company called Hemp Lucid. And we started to come here and we started to edit here and do all kinds of stuff. And we were here and we're like, wow, you know, this is a major veteran base. There's an incredible amount of veterans. Um, you've got the Utah with the highest suicide rates in the country. 
and something's wrong here because you've got a huge religious component going on. You've got uh, a lot of opportunity, beautiful nature. This should be the lowest suicide rate in right. the whole country, and it's this should the be the highest. mecca of, of uh, chilling. And it's, yeah, yeah, and it's, it's something's happening. Yeah. So we said, let's. I'm calling this like our ketamine theory of everything. So let's take the ketamine. Let's show statistically and verifiably that when we give this to veterans over the course of time with a doctor in the right set and setting that these people are going to have an incredible transformation and so we uh through a philanthropist we were able to give 400 to begin with 400 free treatments to veterans amazing and so we start giving out these treatments and we have them all fill out this uh, form called a PHQ-9. It's a very standard mood analysis uh, form. And you see that these people, they come in and I think the highest score is a 27 on the PHQ-9. It talks about, do you feel suicidal? Do you feel any happiness? Do you, you know, do this and that? It talks about everything. The highest score is a 27. People come in high 20s all the time, veterans, and they're on Dozens of medications. I mean, quite literally, one guy was on 22 medications from the Veterans Administration. And they come in and they do their ketamine treatment. They have this experience, probably get their dopamine back. They come in for the second one. They fill out the thing and they're like, a 15. And they're like, wait a minute. Like, and I didn't even know I was feeling this good. And then their wife's sitting there and she's like, yeah, didn't you know that you were like, you know, you took out the trash and you were whistling and you took the kids to the the mall, like you never go to the mall. And the guy and the person's like, yeah, you know what? Like, wow, I didn't even realize it. Like, maybe I'm feeling better. And then they keep doing it, and their scores are going lower and lower and lower. And the protocol with the ketamine is if you have treatment resistant depression, you do six treatments over about a two week period. And then based on you come back every month or every quarter uh, to get one booster treatment. And eventually, as Dr. Brooks in New York, who's probably treated more patients than anybody else, he said, at some point, you don't need it anymore. You've built up enough neural pathways. Right, that you've restructured, you rewired your brain, and now you're just a happy, you're back to normal. Yeah. And so we started to, through Dr. Heemstra uh, here in Utah, we put the protocol in place. He has a great protocol. It's uh, it's a very unique protocol where the you get uh, multiple intramuscular shots over time so you're basically doing three treatments in the same time that you would do one treatment in another clinic so that means you're metabolizing three times as much ketamine when you're in there and these veterans you know we've got a video that we put out for the ketamine fund and one guy it was right after his first treatment he's like you know i i feel like happiness like anybody who's like forgot what happiness feels like you got to come in here and do this you know he was just so blown away the other guy who was on 22 medications he's down to zero medications he's just doing his boosters um we have another guy uh an um an army ranger who was in that whole black hawk down and he 19 years old he was exposed to like really horrible things nate yeah we're, nate. Gonna, we're gonna have nate uh, yeah you've got to have nate on yeah, the show he's fantastic phenomenal and him and his wife brooke, brooke they're amazing advocates for ketamine and what happened to him was he was, you know, had disabilities. So he just sit home and he started taking drugs and drinking. And one, you know, one night he turned his gun on himself and grace of God, it didn't go off. And he kind of shocked himself back into, you know, his, his frame of reference. He checked himself, his family checked him into the VA, he stayed there, he was inpatient. He was on medication and stuff. He came out and uh, he found uh, his wife, Brooke, and she really cared about him. And she said, look, I'm I'm going to take the most radical step possible. Because there's nothing left to do. I heard about this ketamine. My friend did it. She had a good experience. I think you're you have to do the ketamine. And he's like, ah, it's like one more thing that's not going to work. I don't even want to do it. You know, and she's like, well, you're doing it because like either that or this thing's over, you know, and he was like, all right, I'm going to do it. First treatment. He said he felt like he had a, he always had this spring that was loaded. It was just going to fire off. Yeah. And he's like, for the first time, he's like, I'm not holding the spring back anymore. Right. And then he came and he did his six treatments and he's just in an amazing place. He's advocating. He's like, you know, he's just 
really changing a lot of people's lives. And thanks to to you and and Brooke, and we have to give Brooke a shout out over here for doing amazing work, uh, yeah. putting this uh, creating event, awareness, creating for... awareness, and and bringing this. Uh, um, uh, you know all these people in, in Utah. This event that you guys put together, where I met Nate and and I and I've I, I've heard his story, which is amazing. And uh, uh, and Ori and other uh, veterans who yes. were talking about their stories. And um, I'm gonna invite them all to this show because I want to hear everything in yeah, detail. They have I want to incredible stories. I want to share their stories in detail so other people can can really connect with what they went through so yeah. they don't think that this is that they haven't tried other things you know we want it we need to change a perception that this is a this is a thing that is literally changing lives after people were at the brink of of uh of really you know committing a suicide and yeah. um and this is what saved them yeah we have to like make this the first stop where right now it's like the protocol is oh you take all these medicines and everything and if that all that stuff doesn't work well i guess you try ketamine but it's got to be you do ketamine. If that doesn't work, the twenty five percent or fewer, do. right? Yeah, then you do. Then whatever you go through you need to that, do. That, yeah the tr the other treatment. And for... you know, Doctor Bob, he's got an interesting approach too. He says that ketamine, a series of ketamine treatments, could be an analysis of if you're depressed. So the situation is that you go, I don't know, am I depressed? He says, Well, do a ketamine treatment. If you don't get much out of it. You weren't depressed. If it changes a lot in your life and how you're feeling, then yeah, you were depressed. You were. And that's an interesting. You. That's an interesting approach or perspective yeah. on this. Um, what are some of the? Are there side effects uh, to to uh, to ketamine? Um, really, no. I mean, the the number one uh, side effect that's negative is nausea that occurs in you know I don't know twenty five percent or so of the people that take it. So you know before treatment, you take one of those Zofrans, like if you're going out on a boat for nausea, right. you take that and then no side effects. Amazing. Um, the it's very safe. You know, like a low dose of ketamine might be something like fifty or hundred milligrams of ketamine, maybe up to couple hundred milligrams that's like a low dose to treat a child to put them under you're using you know 10 or 20 times that amount on it on a newborn baby so we're talking about a safety profile on this low dose ketamine for depression and, and anxiety it it's just very very safe it wears off super quick that's why you don't even have to have an anesthesiologist around because it's gonna the half-life so quick it's just gonna you know fade out and not affect you so no, uh, no effects. Um, what Dr. Brooks in New York, who's treated again, you know, several thousand patients, he said, no one that's ever come in here for depression or anxiety has ever become addicted to the ketamine. He said, if you have a drug addict that's abusing drugs and abusing heroin and this and that, and you give them a thing of ketamine, of course, they're going to use it and abuse it. But he's like, no one that comes in for depression has ever become addicted it's that safe that's amazing and the same is apparently true with with uh, all the other uh, uh, plant medicines like you know, with the ayahuasca and people are not doing this to like get high and some kind of like no. a recreational drug or, or something this is these things are so transformational and they have all these benefits that people just when when they come out of it and they see that different perspective that you were talking about how what you're putting in your body and the connectedness with the universe and, and, and everything. They just have a different perspective. So they don't want to pollute themselves. Yeah. I mean, these things, because of how intense they are, they're very not addictive. They're some of the most least addictive substance on earth because if somebody said, hey, Zap, you want to do some ibogaine today? I'll give you that million dollars today. Mm -hmm. like, nah, it's a, not doing it. Too you intense. Know, too <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Don't there. need it. I'll figure have out lesson. another way to get that money, you know? So it's like, you know, these are very non-addictive things. And so I think that's important. But, you know, this veteran case study that we're doing, we're running these veterans through and you're able to look at how, you know, statistically they change to see the people. Um, you know, this is something that from a cost standpoint, the Veterans Administration and the, and, and the government should be jumping on because <clears throat> it's very cost effective. It's very cheap for the ketamine. It's very effective. Uh, it causes people to have better and better therapies and need less and less traditional medication. So this could save the vet. This will save the Veterans Administration because right now when somebody's talking to a psychiatrist, taking drugs, going into a you know, emergency room on a Saturday night, having a panic attack, it's like that costs a lot of money. If you could just be treating these people with a few dollars worth of ketamine, 
this is amazing. And what we feel like is, you know, uh, we have an opportunity to create enough awareness about ketamine and then have opportunities for veterans to go to these different places. And, you know, the way it's being done now, it could be done, you know, even more cost effectively. You could run here in Utah, you could run a hundred people a day through a, a single clinic, just banging them through because if you had all these patients and you had the medical staff in the middle and you have the right protocol, you could do tons of people. Right now, unfortunately, ketamine is not covered by insurance. Uh, the drug companies have been very difficult about, you know, getting it covered because they want you to be on the Xanax and the Zoloft and the Paxil and all that stuff. But what happened recently this is a huge breakthrough for ketamine is that, uh, Johnson & Johnson has a division called Janssen Pharmaceuticals, and they patented a molecule of the ketamine that's slightly derivative of the ketamine. They call it S-ketamine. And they are now giving that for depression, and the insurance companies are paying for it. The trick is that they're paying you know, thirty to $40,000 for that treatment of the S-ketamine, which actually isn't as effective as just a you know a two or three dollar dose of the regular ketamine because what they do is in order to get it all cleared and everything they put it into a nasal spray and then when you take ketamine through your nasal cavity it's it's a different onset to the brain it's going through your opiate receptors it's just not the same and you're not metabolizing uh, all the ketamine you're getting like 30% of the ketamine when you take it nasally. When you take it intramuscular IV, you're getting 100% of it into your bloodstream. So when you do this S-ketamine and you take the highest dose they'll give you is 26 milligrams in one nostril, 26, and then another one, <clears throat> 26. So you just took 52 milligrams of ketamine. You just metabolized a third of it. So you got about 15 milligrams of ketamine. Like that's not enough to dissociate. You have to take, you know, the usual normal dose is like, 0.5 milligrams per kilogram of weight that you weigh. So an average person, maybe they're going to get like 40 or 50 milligrams the first time. So here you got, you know, uh, 15 milligrams versus 40 or 50, and then you get to 100 and you're metabolizing and dissociating. Right. So you've got this thing where once again, the pharmaceuticals and the insurance companies are like, hey, this is great. We'll charge thousands of dollars for this thing that's ineffective instead of this cheap thing. And it's as tragic as it sounds, I think what, what's been great about it is that now they've started to come out and say, hey, ketamine for depression is amazing. And the drug company is saying, this absolutely works for depression, but they have this cooked up way to, you know, so work a, the system. So is it a money grab? It's a money grab. You know, Warren Gumpel, who's my co-founder in the ketamine fund, uh, and he's a great ketamine advocate, he always says that there's a shift coming where right now the pharmaceutical companies are like super powerful, but the only group that's more powerful, more money than the pharmaceutical companies are the insurance companies. And when the insurance companies realize that, hey, for a few dollars of this ketamine, we can avoid these people doing, you know, all these pharmaceuticals and therapy and all these freak out sessions, like all that stuff we can just do with ketamine. They're going to demand that the pharmaceutical companies are going to go, you know what, save your stuff for later. If the ketamine doesn't work, then you'll do this because this is going to just save us Ton trillions of, of dollars. Right. And eventually I think that paradigm. So is the gonna market is going to speak with money. Literally, yeah. it's going to the it's gonna biggest player with the most upside is going to realize that ketamine is the same. Very interesting. Well, I hope they do. I yeah. hope they do. Let's talk about um, what else you guys are doing to to uh, to create awareness. I know you're working on another yes. documentary. So let's yes. talk about that. This is super exciting. This is we hope going to lift the profile of ketamine right into the American household, which is where we just finished a movie called Lamar Odom Reborn. So Reborn. And what happened is um, I was screening my movie two years ago. I was screening my movie, The Reality of Truth, at a health center called Hippocrates Health Institute down in West Palm Beach, Florida. Amazing place. If you get a catastrophic illness, you go there, they detox you, they put you on a 
vegan diet, raw, and you reboot your immune system. And so I like showing the movie there. It's a great, you know, audience for my movie. And so I showed it one night and a guy came up to me after and he's like, hey, I'm friends with Lamar Odom, the basketball player, Kardashian. He's like, you know, I just saw your movie about plant medicine. Like, do you think you could help him with it? Because I think he really needs it. He's in like a tough place right now. I said, yeah, like bring him, you know, bring him to me. I'm happy to talk to him and help him out, whatever I can do. Uh, he came down to Florida and I said, look, I went and saw him and I, I said, look, here's what's up with the ketamine and Warren and I, we've got a relationship to the clinic. Why don't you come to the ketamine clinic, do the ketamine, have this experience of going inside yourself because he'd never had any psychedelic experience. You know, there's a, there's a problem in the African American community where it's very difficult for them to rationalize doing psychedelics because there's this bias where it's let's say a white kid in the suburbs takes a psychedelic and has like a freak out you know they're gonna be go to a psychologist and the whole community is gonna be like hey we're behind you but like if you're an african-american kid and you freak out you might get shot by the cops they might put you in a mental institution for the rest of your life like there's serious downside and i think we have to fix that in society make places where you can go and do these catalysts in a totally safe safe environment open to everybody non-judgmental right. for everybody and so lamar they, he'd always been told don't do don't do that stuff you'll go crazy and so he was at the end of his rope he said i don't you know i don't know what else to do i'm going to try the ketamine it sounds you know reasonable i trust you zappy and let's, let's do it so we filmed and we sat him down he did his ketamine and he comes out in the movies like I never felt this good in my life. He's like, I can't, you know, so much happened in there and I'm processing it, but like, I just never felt that happy inside, you know? And so we coached him to come back and do a few more ketamine treatments and we filmed it and he has this incredible transformation in the ketamine. And he said, I said, you know, he said, what do I do? What's next? And I said, look, you know, you have an addiction profile. You're an African-American guy. There's an African root called Iboga. And I think because of your profile, you should take this African root. And I will guide you. I've guided other people. I've done it myself. I'll take you down to Mexico because it's illegal here. But we'll go down to Mexico where it's legal. And I'll, we'll guide you. So I brought him down there to, to somebody who does it. They have the doctor there. And they give you the IV. And they watch your heart and everything. And he did the Iboga game. And this is in the movie and he had this incredible transformation because the ibogaine works on you mentally but it also reboots your physical and it wipes your prefrontal cortex so you don't detox you're even if you were smoking two packs of cigarettes or doing heroin or whatever you have none of it in your body so it's like a reset it's a total reset well that's that's what i heard about ibogaine that the the ability to to uh, um treat really hardcore addictive uh, substances like heroin uh, heroin you know literally in one session which is like unheard of like yeah. this is like the heroin is like one of the most difficult uh, drugs to uh, to, uh, to to get you know get, get off. off of yeah and meth these things yeah. that are just seem like they're impossible to break out of the ibogaine it breaks you out of it and then your your system is so you feel so good and then the next day you feel twice as good the next day you feel twice as good. you're like I can't believe this. Like, if, if this lasts, this sure. is going to be incredible. You know, better and better. It's called like the after the ibogaine afterglow. You know, and it lasts for months and years. But if you know, even if you came out of a, you know, a heroin addiction for months, you're just going to. Oh, you be, got a new lease on life. Clean. Yeah, you got a new lease. You're going to have to change your lifestyle, or you're going to probably go back into it. But you have this window to work on yourself. And so Lamar, we were driving back to California 48 hours after the Ibogaine and we're in the van and Lamar's like, I feel so good mentally and physically. He's like, I think I can make a comeback in professional basketball. And this is a guy who had like, you see in the movie, he had 12 strokes, six heart attacks, liver failure, kidney failure. They didn't even know if he's going to walk. And He's like, I feel so good. He's like, I, I'm going to make a comeback in professional basketball. And his bodyguard friend was in the in the van with us. And he's like, Lamar, take it easy, dude. OK, <laughs> you'd have to work out four hours a day. You can't be smoking marijuana. You know, and Lamar's like, I know what I got to do. He's like, I'm doing it. And the guy was like, oh, and so for, like, you know, four months later, Lamar winds up playing in a professional tournament in Dubai and he comes back and has this 
Uh, he wound up playing in the three-on-three -three tournament. I think he realized that, you know, at 40 years old, he can't, you know, perform and go on the road and all kinds of stuff like he used to. But just for him to make that comeback yeah. like a Rocky yeah. for himself it's, yeah. was incredible. And then, uh, you know, he he reconnected he, with his ex-wife and his kids. He really became more present for them. He had his ex-wife and his kids do ketamine treatments. In the movie, you see he brings his father, who he's been estranged from, who had a heroin addiction, um, who's on methadone for decades. He brought him in to do the ketamine. We filmed it, which was really like, you know, oh bringing them together. Amazing. He, um, you know, he just had these amazing transformations. He's like, you know, I, I like, I, I don't fear death. I'm just like, I, I can't fail. Like, what? I should have died. Like, I got a new lease on life. Like, this is. I'm just going to do the best way that I can. At the end of the movie, he actually says, you know, maybe if this movie does what I think, he's like, you know, I could wind up being like the Malcolm X of mental health, like whatever it takes. This is the moment where you can't go by what used to work, whatever. This is a whatever it takes and Ibogaine, ketamine, these are like whatever it takes type of opportunities. To, but to realize how safe they are, how effective, and now here it is. You know, it's um, two years since we started and a year or so since the Ibogaine and he's totally clean. He's gotten engaged. He's working out every day. His, his uh, fiance is amazing. She's a trainer. So they're training. I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, couldn't come back and play in tournaments and things like that because he's just like so strong mentally. And what an amazing way. turnaround. That's mm -hmm. just... That's that's just an amazing story. I can't wait to watch that. We can't wait. We just <laughs> finished it. We're talking to the distribution platforms right. about it coming out. Yeah. But I think right after that, Lamar is going to be recognized as you know really like a warrior for mental health. Right. You know, and that's what's needed: uh, more awareness, more people coming out, more celebrities talking about these things, so that they do get uh, more eyeballs on this and 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 con reconsider this and look into it and and change people's opinions yes. and and. Um, and send, save save lives. So, is it going to come out on uh, you, uh, your first uh, documentary? Was is it on Netflix? Or uh, is no, it, the, uh, my first documentary, The Reality is Truth. We brought it out uh, on Amazon Prime Amazon, uh, and, yeah, uh, and yeah. YouTube. It's yeah. on YouTube. It's mm -hmm. now been uh, amazingly. It's been viewed over six million times. That's and, amazing. Uh, people watch it, you know, many times too because there's a lot of layers of information in there, um, which is great. And I think this movie with Lamar is going to really crack it on ketamine and ibogaine and just put that out there and you know we're living in a celebrity driven culture whether we like it or not um and so to see somebody like lamar go through it where people you know they've followed him they feel like they really know him they've watched him go to the deepest depths and now they're seeing him make this comeback it's like I just can't wait for this movie to come out because so much hope in this movie and so much <clears throat> for everybody that uh, I, I know it's going to affect and change how people think about these catalysts. You need to be on Joe Rogan's podcast as well and probably with Lamar. Yeah, that would for be, sure. That would be great. For sure. That would be great. And, uh, you know, even like these morning shows, The Ellen, DeGeneres, and The View, and, you know, all these, it, because it, it's still shocking how little information there is. Sometimes I'll talk to, you know, even like a, somebody who owns a drug rehab center and they've got, you know, 200 bed facility and they're working with addicts all day. And I say, you know, tell them about Ibogaine and they're like, what's Ibogaine? And I'm like, you what? own this place and, and you, you don't, don't know, know about it? And they're like, no, what right. is it? I'm like, you know, oh my God, like we got some work to do, but you know, well, this in, is... in part it's because it is their business. So it's like, they, you know, they, they, I don't know, maybe I don't want to be negative about it. It was like they want customers back yeah, and, if, you know, yeah. so they go through like standard protocol. And if that protocol fails them, then these people end up back in, in, in their institution. But that's, that's, very true. that's a short sighted. That's a that's a very myopic way of looking at this problem versus yeah. like trying like, look, we want to we want to. This is this literally can change the planet. Yeah. Just like you opened up with. I mean, yeah. it's like you're going to change how people think about it, the way people feel in general. And this opens up a, an opportunity for people literally to focus on changing the world instead of being like, Oh, I'm just so disillusioned. I don't want to do anything, and and just you know numbing themselves with all yeah. these things that we talked about. And I'm you know I'm really lucky in that you know Michelle Rodriguez and Lamar as spokespeople for this. They're amazing because they 
they don't necessarily have to listen to their handlers. You know, a lot of these celebrities, they get to a certain point and the agent says, don't do this and don't film that and everything. And, but these two people were like, well, you know what? I, I'm doing this for myself. I need to do this right. and I'm willing to share this. And I think when people see, you know, how open Lamar, I'm probably one of the only people that would let you film me doing a psychedelic, but beyond me, it's like, that's stupid. Like, why would you, what if something weird happens, you know? So the fact that Lamar let me do that is, you know, is really using his celebrity and his power to share with other people. And I think people are gonna really appreciate that. And I think for him, when he gets the feedback loop after the movie where people come up to him and they're like, you know, you saved my brother's life you saved my cousin, he went and did Ibogaine, or my sister did ketamine and she's doing great. Like right. when he gets that feedback loop, it's really gonna accelerate you know, him and, and his, his cause. It's amazing. Uh, where can people find out more? Um, we have the ketaminefund.org. Yep, right? That's ketamine the go-to place to, to, uh, to start. And you're gonna have a lot of, you do have already a lot of information on it. And uh, we put uh, a, a, a uh, image over here of uh, contact at ketaminefund.org is is uh, is a good email to, to to reach out to you guys. Anything Perfect else? Perfect spot. That's a great spot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can check out zappy.com to see some of what I'm up to. Uh, Odom Reborn, O D O M Reborn, uh, dot com is the movie site at mm -hmm. this point. And um, you know, we're just trying to get the information that that lunch that you came to the other day was with influencers like yourself in the veterans community people who had access to different veteran groups and organizations because you know this is just an information moment you know yeah. we just have to educate at this point it's clear what the science is it's clear you know what we have to do and that is just educate people and back you know in my experience of getting into domain names or, you know, getting into the cannabis space years ahead of other people or domain names. It's like you spend a lot of time educating people and you have to become, you know, try not to be frustrated because they're not necessarily seeing the vision as clearly as you are at that moment. But I think if we just keep putting out these veteran, you know, profiles and put out the studies and we go from Utah to Los Angeles. And so I just want to segue one place that we're taking this in the future. And I, and I call this the, you know, theory of ketamine for everything is now we've done the veterans to for PTSD and we're going to continue to work on that till we got it for every veteran that needs it. Uh, at the same time, we're doing uh, ketamine for homeless people in Los Angeles. We're going to start giving ketamine Amazing. treatments to homeless people there get to the root of it, try Hugely to give needed. them, yeah, yeah, try to give them some, you know, pathway to, to get uh, back, reclaim out. their life, yeah. And we've got a clinic there, we're already starting to do that. Uh, they also work with addiction, which is a huge profile. We're giving away free treatments to the homeless and, and to a lot of addicted people in Los Angeles. And then uh, we're starting a program for victims of uh, mass trauma, mass shootings and things. So for example, we have one that we're putting together right now where in Florida at the Parkland School where they had that shooting, we're about to offer a uh, scholarship to all the faculty and staff there to do free ketamine treatments down in Florida. And so let's say there's 100 faculty and staff, 20, let's say 25 of them take us up on this offer to come do it. Well, 25 of these people go through these ketamine treatments and take the charge off of that trauma and adjust their reality and start talking to the media and start saying, hey, we need this for the kids. And, you know, this ketamine should be used, you know, PTSD, addiction, homelessness, trauma, suicide, you know, suicide, you know, this is for everything. And that's how it, it's miraculous. It's super cheap. It's super effective. It's super safe. I mean, this is and the legal. miracle. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I showed you that picture the other day of your brain on regular brain, on psilocybin mushrooms, you see a little bit of activity. Then on LSD, you see a bunch of activity. And then on the ketamine brain, you see... 80% of the brain is active and firing. And it's like, you see these movies like Limitless and everything where people are like, oh, we need this yeah, Limitless to drug to turn on our right. mind. This we is have it. it. This is it. This we is just it. have to accept that we're blessed enough to be in this reality right now where we get to bring this thing out. And so, you know, it's so effective. That's why, you know, the ketamine fund, you could probably see in Nate and Auric and these people, it's like, they're just radiating hope because yeah. it's, it's real. It's not like, 
some therapy that you hope, oh, I hope they have a good day today. It's like, nah, they got the frequency vibration. I know they're good. Now they're just going to go through their day and oh, yeah. affect other people. People need to hear their stories and the part that I see myself in, and that's what we're going to do in Utah over here through you and Brooke and, and Nate. We're going to connect with, with veterans that have that or maybe pre and post uh, and to share their experiences, how, you know, how, so, so people can connect with their stories. So people yes. can hear what they've been through, what they've done, you know, using the traditional approach. Um, I just want to have more of those stories to, to add on to this public awareness of how this is changing people. And lives. also for you to have the direct experience, like it's really important for us in our program to get influencers like yourself to have the experience because, you know, maybe you're not depressed, Maybe you have PTSD, but you're not depressed. Maybe you don't need six treatments. Maybe, you know, maybe you need one or two or three. Maybe, you, you know, you need to go twice a year and get a booster. Right. But, you know, you know, if you have that direct experience, then you're going to be able to project that experience in first person to veterans. And I think that's the important part. It's like, I can talk all I want. I'm not a veteran. But you as a veteran, when you tell somebody about your experience who's a veteran now, they're going to trust you immediately. They know that you're looking through a similar lens and, you know, they're going to be much more open to it. So we really just have to tip the people like you. That's why I wanted to come here the day after and it, our and, lunch. And, and I was like, I got to sit with and, you and, and talk. And, I, and I, t I so appreciate it. Well, I'll get I'll get veterans in over here, tell their stories. Um, I am willing to try it. It's it's uh, it's legal. It's here. It's available. We are in a really good place in Utah with super experienced uh, people that are doing and changing people's lives. So I definitely want to give it a try as well, and and um and use myself as a storyteller to to tell my story how it changed my life. So yeah. hopefully you're going to have this conversation again after. Let's I, have it after. after I that'll do be it. amazing. And, and you um, know what's happening over at Doctor Bob's office, Doctor Heemstra is that now uh, Oric, one of the vets who, who came in there from the ketamine fund, he's now uh, taken this on as his mission with Dr. Bob and they've revitalized the whole operation. They've now got five veterans working there, uh, you know, all branches of the, the military. And it's just got this vibe where it's like veterans helping veterans. And when somebody comes in and they're traumatized, and the, but they get to hear from a veteran who's like themselves, it's easy for them to let their guard down. And we had an amazing session that we filmed uh, a few weeks ago here in Dr. Bob's office where a, uh, a Navy SEAL came in who was having severe PTSD. He was having trouble at work. He was having trouble at home. It was really a bad situation because you could see he was a highly functional, super intelligent guy. He, you know, in the Navy SEALs, that's like, you know, you, you look up to those guys yeah, as superheroes, you know? Right? And he was like, you, you knew he was going to kill himself if something didn't change. And so we brought him in and he got to sit down with, you know, an Army Ranger, Nate, an Oric, a Marine, and a couple other Marines there, another person who's an Air Force uh, Lieutenant Colonel. And we just talked and talked and they talked and they shared their experience and the wife shared the experience with his wife and the guy was like all right i'm ready to do it came in the next day he did his six treatments and all reports are you know from his family from the other vets that have guided him through he's doing amazing his work's great his home life is like it's That's just totally what, changed. A, what a transformation nate mentioned uh, him to me and we were talking about yesterday uh, about him and it's like we need to bring him in. I yeah. want to tell his story he, as well. Him and Nate, it would yeah, be, you know, have be an army ranger and phenomenal. A Navy yeah, yeah. We'll, co we'll cover all the services and uh, and how it's it's changing lives. Yeah. I'm so excited and I'm so grateful for uh, for you to be here. I mean, this is just um, everything just lined up. I mean, it was yeah. just amazing. I want to give huge uh, shout out to uh, to Brooke Lark who uh, who uh, um, contacted me and. Uh, and through her, I, I was able to to go to this uh, event and meet you and Warren and Nate and Ark and, and everybody great you never over there. Know and how Dr. It's Bob. Happen, you yeah, know? and it's so just... it's amazing. So we're going to take this to the next level. We're going to talk about this more. I'm going to have through them. I'm going to connect with all the veterans and and bring them in over here, share their stories, and um and we're going to share this and 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 bring this out to the um, public's awareness. Yeah. Where, you know what, what kind of change? I can't wait. Happening. I'm psyched to come back after you've had your own direct experience because <laughs> it's going to be you're going to say. Wow, this is the thing that's going to help every veteran. This is it. And every person in society that is suffering, this is the first step to helping them out. So It's amazing. Do you want to um, 
I know you have to go. You're nope. a busy, uh, busy guy, and um, appreciate everything that you're doing. And uh, any shout outs that you want to give to anybody um, while we're on, still on the show? Um, you know, I, I just, when anybody watching this, just, you know, I think you have to try to accept that nature, you know, has your back and it's very intelligent. And if you can just listen to nature, go inside yourself and, you know, don't take it seriously because that's, you know, there's a funny quote, you know, famous quote from the Maharishi who taught the Beatles to meditate and has millions of people meditating. He has this famous quote that I always tell people before they're going to go in here. And he said, we have the serious responsibility to take nothing serious. <laughs> and I'm like, if you can remember that, you're going to have a great experience. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to tap into that as well saying, uh, I've, I've heard uh, Alan Watts mentioning somebody else's, I uh, forget who was the, um, uh, um, uh, who was the originator of that quote, but someone said, the reason why, why an angels fly is because they take themselves lightly. Mm, I love it. <laughs> and great so point. if you do treat, you know, treat yourself lightly, um, impossible things can yeah. happen. And if you have the direct experience, like, you, you probably see firsthand that, you know, and a lot of people report this in the academy is that you see that you're a speck of dust in the universe, but you're also the entire universe. And when you see that and you come out of that, you're like, you know what? I'm okay. I don't have to try to control this whole thing. I'm just going to enjoy it. I'm going to respect that this is a miracle that's happening. And I'm just going to wander through and try to, you know, share that energy of this is a miracle. Beautiful. Beautiful. What do we end with? This is this is just such an amazing episode. We're gonna take this. Uh, we're gonna push this forward. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna bring new guests. So stay tuned. Uh, we're gonna be talking with with veterans, with uh, with other people who were affected positively by this experience and and their journey. And um, um, I want to shout out to to uh, to Brooke Lark and to Nate and to Oric and everybody else who was uh, who I met yesterday. You guys are doing a phenomenal job bringing this to public's attention. And of course, Zappy, thank you for being here. It's it, it's an amazing, it's an honor, it's an amazing experience for me to have you here and to being making this you know a small contribution and taking this to the next level. And uh, I'm going to do my part to uh, to spread the message. Awesome. Thank you. You too. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Yeah. Love it. The world is full of interesting people with wisdom and extraordinary experiences to learn from. Join me on a journey to discover them, speak with them, and learn from them. I'm Adrian Sinclair, host of A Podcast with Interesting People at apodcast.com. 